This week we're talking about phonological and phonemic awareness and phonics. We're going to drill down and look at what does instruction look like. So first of all, let's do a quick review of what is phonology and what is a phoneme. You'll pause the video and answer these questions. Now let's look at phonological awareness. This is awareness of sounds, the ability to, dis to distinguish larger units of speech, such as words and syllables. And you can see from the bubble below, phonological awareness is the big piece, and within it you have phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is the ability to hear and manipulate the sounds, an individual sound, a phoneme, that makes up words in oral language. So it's looking at only one sound, Phonological awareness is looking at larger units, a word, a syllable, how many words in a sentence. Okay. We're going to pause and take a look at um, Dr. Simonson's um, ideas on how to help children build phonological awareness. Okay, I'm going to talk about the trickiest concept in all of reading, and a lot of teachers struggle with this, and it's the difference between phonological awareness phonemic awareness and phonics, right? And so a lot of times we get those mixed up and I'm just gonna give you the big picture on what those three are. And we'll, throughout this course, and especially in the beginning, we'll learn more about them. So this is a uh, big picture overview. So the English language has 26 letters, as you know, and it makes 44 sounds. And what's tricky about learning to read is those letters don't always map directly onto those sounds and different letters can make different sounds, right? Like the letters CH can sometimes say CH, like in chair, or they can make the K sound like in Christmas, or they can make the SH sound like in machine, right? And so it's really tricky for kids to learn to read because they don't have, there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between the letters and sounds, right? Now in Spanish, there's more of a one-to-one -one correspondence and it's a little easier to read. But in English, there's not always that correspondence. It has what we call a deep orthography. So there's not a one sound, one letter relationship, right? Um, and it's, imp it's an important distinction that we need to make as teachers to understand to help kids learn to read. So let me start by saying that a basic term you need to know about these three terms is a phoneme. What is a phoneme? And a phoneme is the smallest unit of sound in language, right? It's the smallest unit of sound. It's not always represented by one letter. It might be a, a cluster of letters, right? Like S H. the letters S-H make one sound. What is it? Shh, right. So it's the sound that you hear in a word. And again, it's something you can do with your eyes closed, right? So a phoneme is the smallest unit of sound in a word. And we hear those sounds in our head when we read, and so we need to know about phonemes. And the main skills we're gonna use with those phonemes is segmenting or, or breaking up a word into phonemes, and then blending <coughs> those sounds back together. So <coughs> segmenting or stretching out a word into sounds, and then blending those sounds back together are the main tasks that readers do with phonemes. Now, Phonolog I'm going to start with phonological awareness. Think of a big circle or draw a big circle on your page, and phonological awareness is going to be the broader awareness of sound, right? Even like hearing a sound is phonological awareness. And if you think of the word phonological, it has phone in it, right, at the beginning, structurally, and that means sound. So phonological awareness is just hearing sounds, and it includes the following. So it includes rhyming, like if you say the word mop, and I say I mop the floor, which words rhyme, what are some other words that rhyme with mop? Top, hop, stop, and that's something you do in kindergarten, right, in pre-K, and those rhyming skills develop phonological awareness, and there are things we do anyway, right, like singing, and rhyming and even like jump rope rhymes and chanting with kids develop phonological awareness. And there are things parents and families usually do at home anyway, right? They're kind of natural activities. So rhyming develops phonological awareness or awareness of sound. Another thing that is involved with phonological awareness is um, alliteration. So like think of a tongue twister. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. 
right? Or she sells seashells by the seashore. <coughs> those all start with the same sound. Just hearing that and, and using those sounds is developing phonological awareness, the broader awareness of sound, right? And also hearing syllables in words. So like when we clap our names, like my name, Semingson, Semingson. So like clap your name. This is very elementary, but it's something you would do in the classroom. So try it. Right? Or counting with your fingers, hearing syllables. All right, so that's enough of that. So we call that syllabication, right? We're, what we just did was we segmented the syllables in a word. And that develops phonological awareness, this broader awareness of sound. Finally, uh, the most complex task we can do with phonological awareness is a skill called phonemic awareness. And phonemic awareness is the smaller category of phonological awareness. It's a more discrete skill. And with phonemic awareness, we're really working only, not with syllables, we're only working with the smallest units of sound. So the broader awareness of sound is phonological awareness, right? But the smaller, more um, defined phonological awareness is phonemic awareness. And I'm going to give you some examples of working at the smallest units of sound. So one thing we can do is isolate sounds. So if I say, say the word chair. So just try it. Chair. chair. What's the first sound you hear at the beginning of the word chair? Good. So that's isolating. Or if I say, say dog. dog. What's the sound that you hear at the end of that word? Good. Good, right. So you can do initial sounds, medial, or final sounds. But just identifying those sounds is isolating the phoneme. And that's really basic. And that's something we do in kindergarten, right? With pictures or words. And then we can also segment phonemes. So if I say a word like, if I say the word cat, and I say, say it. Cat. cat. Let's count how many sounds. Let's stretch out the word like bubblegum. And let's count the sounds. So cat. At how many sounds did you hear? Three. Three. That's called segmenting. So what we just did was we segmented the word into its constituent phonemes. Now that was a one-to-one -one correspondence. We had uh, three letters and we had three sounds, right? That's easy. That that word was pretty regular. How about a word that doesn't have one-to-one -one correspondence in terms of letters and sounds? The word sheep. So say it. Sheep. sheep. Let's count the sounds. Sh, e, p. How many sounds? Three. Three. So we segmented sheep, and it has, what, five letters, but only three sounds. So what you need to know about phonemic awareness is we're counting and developing awareness of sounds in words. Another thing you can do besides isolate sounds or segment sounds is you can blend them. And so you would say a word slowly and then tell the students to say it fast. Right? So if I, you'd say, boys and girls, I'm going to say a word and I'm going to stretch it out and we're going to play a game where you say the word fast and tell me what the word is. And you would start with words with two phonemes. So you'd say, here we go. I'm going to say the word slow. It. What's the word? Say it fast. It. it. Good. And I didn't, I don't know that I said it the best way. But you would do something like that and scaffold with two phonemes and then work up to three or maybe four phonemes, but not really ever more than that. So that's blending sounds. When you say it slow and the students say it fast. And finally, you can manipulate sounds. So if I say a word, like I say, say chair. 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 And then I say, take off the ch sound and add, what's the new word? Fair. Fair. That's tricky, isn't it? It's actually a little hard. So you actually need a plan for this. It's hard to wing these lessons. The hardest task for phonemic awareness is sound manipulation. <coughs> All right, so phonemic awareness is working at the smallest <coughs> unit of sound in terms of a word, and it's all auditory. It should be all game-like. You have to kind of make it fun and interesting for the kids. So finally, the, le the third term is phonics. So if the first two terms, phonological awareness and phonemic awareness, were about hearing sounds at some level. With phonics, now we're introducing print. So now we, we introduce letters themselves. 
and we talk about the sounds that those letters make, right? Like V says B, right? And SH says SH, and we, we teach those sounds and letters. So with phonics, now we're mapping speech onto print, text is involved, and when children learn that specific sounds and letters go together, they have learned the alphabetic principle. And when they've learned the alphabetic principle, they're really beginning to read. I mean, really reading, you know what I mean? They're not just faking their way through books or guessing. They're actually reading. So this is when the alphabetic principle happens and they learn rules and patterns of letter-sound relationship. Okay, so to recap, um, phonological awareness is just the big, big old awareness of sound. That there are sounds, that sounds can rhyme, that we can start, you know, sentences with certain words like in alliteration. We can have words with syllables in them. Right? So it's a broad awareness of sound. Phonemic awareness is a very specific skill that just focuses on hearing the smallest units of sound in a word. It's really breaking that word down into sounds and then blending those sounds back together, which is what we do when we read. We segment and we blend. I mean, reading is much more than that. We bring meaning into the reading process. But when we're talking about specific words, the phonemes matter. The sounds that the, that word makes matter. Does that make a little bit of sense? And then with phonics, now we have print or text. So that's kind of it for our mini lesson. Now let's review what Dr. Semmingson had to say. One way to identify or to help students identify phonological awareness is to listen to a number of words in a sentence. So example, a teacher reads a sentence and students put in a bag and a, a bean in a bag for each word. Have you ever learned a second language? Sometimes it sounds like a sentence is all one word, where in fact there are five or six or seven words said. Knowing where those delineations between one word and the next word makes it really hard to understand the language. That's a piece of phono phonological awareness. Identifying syllables. An example, a teacher says a word and the students clap for each syllable. Dr. Semmingson demonstrated this one. Rhyming. Example, listen to a poem and tell me the rhyming words. This is something that children love to do and is often done in a home where, the, in, uh, where English is their first language. How often is it done, though, if English is not the first language? And phoneme matching or alliteration. An example, students identify the beginning or middle or ending sounds. Example, Sally sings songs. What sound do you hear at the beginning of the words? You hear s. Notice it's not what letter do you hear or what letter do you see. It's all about the sounds. Phonological awareness is what are the sounds that you hear? Helping children build phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is the ability to perceive and manipulate the sounds that make up words, the individual sounds. You can do this through isolating sounds. That is, a teacher can say the, um, the word dog and then ask, what sound do you hear at the end of this word? G is the sound you hear. We're not asking about the letter. We're asking about the sound, g. Phoneme blending or combining sounds. The teacher stretches out a word, and then the students say it fast. The teacher says k at, and the students say cat. You notice how I've marked it on my arm. That's a method that I've seen many teachers use. The teacher for my grandson, who is in kindergarten, is learning that going k at, cat, blending the sounds together. Phoneme segmentation. That is dividing a word into its phonemes. The teacher says k at and asks students how many sounds did they hear. K at cat three sounds. And phoneme manipulation, substituting sounds. So the teacher might say chair and tells the students to take off the ch sound and add the sh sound. What word do you have? You have fair. Phonics is now looking at sounds and print. And it's not that we never teach phonics along with phonological or phonemic awareness. Sometimes they do blend together. But to know that 
that students need first to hear the sounds, and then we start matching the sounds with print. This can also be called alphabetic principle, teaching of letters, teaching of rules of how the letters go together, and of the patterns of letters to make up words. An example, the letter B says B. This week we're exploring more deeply into the lessons you might use for phonological and phonemic awareness, and you will be exploring and presenting a lesson of your own. So dig deep into understanding phonological and phonemic awareness.